Hi everyone, welcome sa channel natin. Ako nga pala si Janus ng Pinoy Tech Dad. Today, pag-uusapan natin yung mga chipsets na dapat yung iwasan in 2023. So hanggat maaari, iwasan nyo yung mga to. So bago natin simula yung diskusyon, inaanyayahan ko kayong sumali sa Tech Tambayan by Pinoy Tech Dad na Facebook group natin. Napakarami yung matututunan sa group na yon, lalong-lalo na kung nangangailangan kayo ng tulong tungkol sa tech. So join na. But anyway, simulan na natin agad sa number one on my list, the Snapdragon 695. Now, don't get me wrong, the Snapdragon 695 is very capable pagdating sa performance but it is held down by the fact na may mga limitations ito pagdating sa hardware and number one on that is the camera limitations. So right out of the gate, kung camera person ka, this is not something that you should get. Lahat yan, hanggang 1080p 30 frames per second lang. Now, marami magko-comment dyan na hindi naman importante sa kanila yung 4K video recording. So, kahit na walang 4K 30 FPS, okay lang. 1080p 30, okay lang. But the thing is, guys, hindi nyo nasasagad yung value ng pera nyo. And I'm just looking out for you dahil hindi po madaling mag-ipon ng pera, lalong-lalo na sa panahon ngayon, mahirap pong kumita ng pera. So, It is very important na masulit nyo yung value ng pera nyo. And isang paraan doon is magkaroon kayo ng 4K video recording sa mga phones na gagastusan nyo ng 15,000 pesos or above. So kung nasa ganong price range yung Snapdragon 695 na phone na kinoconsider mo, mag-isip-isip ka na. Kasi sayang din na wala kang 4K. And the importance of having 4K is that you're getting... 4 times the resolution of 1080p. Hindi lang po siya double the resolution, 4 times. So kahit na sabihin natin na satisfied ka na with 1080p, happy ka na doon, but if you recorded in 4K, that means kung meron kang importanteng detalye na gustong i-zoom in, kahit na 1080p yung render ng video mo, maganda pa rin and malinaw pa rin. So hindi siya magiging blurry. So it's gonna be important to get better quality videos. And speaking of quality, hindi po maganda ang image processing ng Snapdragon 695 pagdating sa videos. Yes, pwedeng lagyan ng OIS, pwedeng lagyan ng EIS, and pwede mo rin ilagay sa gimbal. But the overall finished product ng quality ng video mo is not gonna be good. At tulad na sinabi ko, madalas ang Snapdragon 695 ino-offer at the 15,000 to 18,000 or 19,000 peso price range. Hindi po sulit yon And real talk lang guys, karimihan din sa mga photos na makukuha nyo from a phone with a Snapdragon 695, hindi rin ganun kaganda yung image processing or image quality. So talagang mabibitin kayo. But there is one exception na medyo naging okay sa akin yung output ng photos and that is the Realme 10 Pro but I'm not sure kung magkano to. So depending on the price, maybe you can consider it. But if it's gonna be beyond 15,000 pesos, For Snapdragon 695, kukulangin ka pa rin with 4K video resolution. Hopefully, this is lower than 15,000 pesos dahil kung camera person ka, well, iwasan mo yung Snapdragon 695. Yung isa pang hardware limitation ng Snapdragon 695 na nakita ko is that it can't play back videos in 4K sa YouTube or even in 2K sa phone mo. So, mabibitin ka doon if ever man gusto mo talaga yung higher quality ng video. Pero ito naman, mapapalampas ko kasi hindi naman natin makikita gaano yung difference ng 1080p to 4K sa YouTube video dito sa phone. Pero kung performance lang ang habol mo, decent performer ang Snapdragon 695. And again, you just have to take note na huwag mo na masyado isipin yung camera pag bumili ka ng phone na may Snapdragon 695. So hopefully malinaw yan. Now let's move on sa next chipset na hindi ko gaano recommended in 2023. And that is the favorite of the brands, the MediaTek Helio G9X series. So nandyan yung G90T, G95, G96, G99. Ano pang G yung may isip nyo mga brands? I don't know. Stop recycling the G9 series kasi... <laughs> Gamit na gamit na and basag na basag na po yan. There is already a better option, the Dimensity series ng MediaTek. So, I'm not sure bakit ayaw pa rin nila tayong tigilan with the G99, G96. Paulit-ulit na lang. Yung mga chipset na yan, yes, they're good performing pagdating sa entry level. But they are still selling these chipsets at an insane prices. So, makikita nyo may mga phones pa rin na worth 15,000, 16,000, 18,000. 1,000 pesos na may G99, G96. Nakakainis kasi nasa close to 10,000 pesos lang yung performance level ng chipset na yan. And isa pang downside is that 
hindi yan 5G na chipset. So this is an old chipset. Now, I do understand na yung G99, medyo binago nila yung fabrication from 12 nanometer sa G96 sa G95. Ginawa nilang 6 nanometer na lang. So yes, mas battery efficient siya, but the performance remains. And kung ikukumpara mo sa mga phones sa may G95, actually, mas maganda pa yung G95 performance over the G99 kung gaming ang habol mo. But again, We're getting phones at the 15,000 peso price range na may MediaTek Helio G9X series. Hindi po sulit yan in 2023. So ano nga ba yung sulit sa presyong 15,000 peso price range and above? Well, I will tell you later guys kasi sasabihin ko rin yung mga chipsets na nagustuhan ko. Yung G9X series na chipsets from MediaTek, eh pwede nyong bilhin but Make sure na nasa 10,000 peso price range. Pwedeng below or pwedeng konting above 10,000. Sakto na yan. Depende na lang sa other features na kasama sa phone. Susunod naman, yung Snapdragon 680 na chipset. Now, I'm not sure if may mga phones pa na lalabas this year na may Snapdragon 680 na chipset. But that one has been used by a lot of brands last year. I understand may mga phones pa na lumabas na merong 15,000 peso price tag para sa Snapdragon 680. Meron pa nga yatang 18,000. Ayoko na lang banggitin. But yeah, that is something that you should avoid lalong-lalo na para sa ganung price range. Pero kung makukuha nyo to at under 10,000 pesos, Pwede na yung Snapdragon 680. Good performer naman siya at entry-level price point. Pero definitely not at the mid-range price point. Kasi mabibiting ka na sa performance. And again, napakaraming good options, better options para sa chipset on your phone at that price range. At panghuli sa mga dapat nyo iwasan na chipsets in 2023 sa flagship level, yung Snapdragon 888. At Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Now take note, ito yung walang plus. Regular 8 Gen 1. So bakit hindi ko nire-recommend yung dalawang chipsets na to? Well, there's only one reason. Bad thermals or thermal throttling. So once uminit na ng phone sa to and sobrang dali nilang uminit, notice nyo magkakaroon kayo ng frame drops sa mga games na nilalaro nyo. So this is something that I would totally tell you to avoid lalong lalo na kung heavy gamer ka so kung gaming ang habol mo you should look for something else wag na yung Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or Triple 8 pero siguro lalagyan ko ng konting exception dahil meron akong paboritong Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 na phone and that is the Realme GT2 Pro so if makahanap kayo ng Realme GT2 Pro and hindi naman kayo heavy gamer but more on camera yung habol nyo and really just an overall good device that is something that I still recommend again with a caveat na pagdating sa Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 hindi po maganda yung thermals and hindi po maganda yan for heavy gaming. Kung casual use lang, pwede na ang Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or 888. But again, if you're gonna use it for applications that will require heavy lifting from the chipset itself, mahihirapan talaga yan at magkakaroon kayo ng thermal throttling and mararamdaman nyo yung init ng chipset. And then honorable mention na lang siguro para sa mga chipsets na nasa entry-level price range, yung mga nasa P-series na chipset from MediaTek, yung mga Unisoc na chipsets at above 5,000 pesos, X na sa akin yan. Anything that performs at around 100,000 and 2 benchmark points and above 5,000 pesos yung presyo, nako, iwasan po natin yan. At least man lang kahit 200,000 and 2 benchmark points, di ba? Para sa 5,000 and above na presyo. Pero pag 5,000 and below, tapos 100,000 plus and 2 benchmark points, pwede na yan kasi wala na tayo masyadong choices pag ganyang presyo. So, yun lang yung tatandaan nyo para sa entry-level na chipset. So, yun yung mga chipsets na hindi ko recommended in 2023. Now, what about the chipsets na nire-recommend ko for 2023? Well, let's start with my favorite, the Snapdragon 778G. Itong chipset na to, 2021 pa available. And I said in my video na mukhang ito yung magiging favorite na mid-range chipset na mga brands for 2022. But surprisingly, mabibilang mo lang yung mga phones na lumabas na may Snapdragon 778G noong 2022. So, I don't know what happened there. Baka may chip shortage. But this year, 
Meron tayong mga phones na asa na may Snapdragon 778G and you can expect na these phones will be well optimized pagdating sa performance, pagdating sa camera, image processing nila dahil maganda talaga yung chipset na to. Very powerful for the price that you're getting it for. Lalong-lalo na if you got something like the Realme Q3S na makukuha nyo lang at around 10,000 to 12,000 pesos naka Snapdragon 778G ka na. And then yung thermals ito based on the Poco X5 Pro na Tinesco, solid, grabe, green lahat. So, hindi siya nag-thermal throttle. So, if you're gonna be gaming on it for a long time, maganda yung performance ng Snapdragon 778G. Again, that is something that I would recommend. Lalong-lalo na if you can find something at around 15,000 to 18,000 pesos na naka-Snapdragon 778G, good yan. Susunod naman, isa tas paborito ng mga viewers ko. Dahil alam na nila yung kakayahan nito. Ito yung MediaTek Dimensity 8100 na chipset na makikita nyo sa Poco X4 GT, sa OnePlus Ace, sa Realme GT Neo 3, and marami pa ibang phones na gumagamit ito. Xiaomi 12T pala. Shoutout sa Xiaomi 12T. So, asahan nyo talaga na solid yung performance na makukuha nyo sa Dimensity 8100 chipset. Lalong-lalo na kung gaming ang habol nyo, this is one of my top recommendations pagdating sa chipset. Susunod naman, yung Snapdragon 870. If you can find a phone na may Snapdragon 870, you will know right away na maganda yung performance ito. So, nandyan yung Poco F3, Poco F4, yung Realme GT Neo 2, and Unfortunately, wala na ako gaano maalala kung ano pa yung gumagamit ng Snapdragon 870. But if you guys can remember, let me know in the comment section kung ano pa yung mga alam yung phones na may Snapdragon 870. Kasi napaka-solid talaga na performance niyan. It's basically the Snapdragon 865, just a little bit better. Kumbaga, but basically, you get flagship level of performance for the price of a mid-range device. So, sobrang sulit ng mga phones na may Snapdragon 870 na chipset. So, you should consider that as well, even in 2023. Now, another chipset that you can consider in 2023 is the MediaTek Dimensity 1080 or the Dimensity 920. They're basically almost the same. Siguro may improvement lang sa ISP ng camera, image processing ng 1080, and then a slight boost sa clock speed. Pero wala sila masyadong pinagkaiba. So, Either one of those chipsets, kung may mahanap kang phone na pasok sa budget mo, that is a good chipset to consider. Kayang-kaya ng chipset na yan na mag-record ng 4K 30fps, solid yung mga performance ng phones na may Dimensity 1080 or 920. A few good examples of phones na may 1080 or 920, nandyan yung Realme 9 Pro Plus, nandyan yung Realme 10 Pro Plus, yung Redmi Note 12 Pro Series na lalabas soon, and then yung Infinix 05G 2023. And finally, let's go sa dalawa pang paborito kong chipsets na kakalabas lang. So let's start with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. This one is so much better than the Snapdragon Dragon 8 Gen 1. Now, you might get confused kasi 8 Gen 1, 8 Plus Gen 1, basta yung may plus, yun yung mas okay. So you get top of the line performance, maganda yung thermals, and wala siyang thermal throttling. So the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is something that you should heavily consider, lalo na at baka bumaba pa yung mga presyo ng phone sa may Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 dahil meron na tayong Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is just a better Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. You get more performance, still great thermals, and makukuha nyo to sa flagship level na phone. So kung afford nyo yung flagship level, look for something that has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So yun na guys yung mga recommended chipsets ko. Kayo, may mga naisip pa kayo mga phone chipsets na dapat nyo i-consider or dapat nyo iwasan. I would like to see your comments in the comment section. And kung gusto nyo makahanap ng mga specific phones na may mga chipsets na nirecommend ko, ililink ko po lahat ng phones na recommended ko na may ganitong chipset dyan sa description box para maging mas madali sa inyo ang paghahanap ng mga phones na to. Anyway, kung na-enjoy mo yung video na to, like, comment, and subscribe at may mga ililink pa ako dyan ng mga videos na panigurado magugustuhan mo. So hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janos ng Pinoy Tech Dad. Kita-kita ulit tayo.